I'm Marty Wilsey. Hey there, I'm Shane McGalley. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Hourlings Podcast Project. This week, a question came up in our writers group on Sunday. Um, the question is, what was the question? Theme or no theme? Oh yeah, we're we are discussing our next anthology. I can cut that part out. <laughs> no, keep it. It's great. <laughs> We're going raw, it. guys. We're we are raw discussing guys. our next anthology. And the first topic that came up is should our anthology have a theme or no theme? The early anthologies that we did uh, were basically submissions of everybody's uh, short stories that they considered their best work of that year. And so at the end of the year, uh, we compiled a uh, anthology that was basically random science fiction and fantasy stories. We did that for several years in a row, but for several of the most recent anthologies, we've always had an organized theme. So the question was, uh, should we do a theme or no theme? So that's the question. In an anthology, is it better to have a theme or not? Let's do, a, so, let's, do a, let's do a vote of hands first. Raise your hand if you think that there should be no theme. I, I can go either way. Raise your hand if you think there should be a theme. I okay. like themes. I like okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, I can see the pros and cons of both. Like, I totally get it. I mean, they say that not having a theme, you think you, you wrote this in your in your post, Marty. Not having a theme attracts more submissions because people feel less constricted, right? So you get more more traction going with, with your uh, anthology. But I voted theme um, for the main reason of I'm familiar with a lot of writers groups that produce anthologies. I'm familiar with a lot of anthologies. I think that readers have less trust in a, a writing group they don't know about, writers they never heard of, then they do a, a theme that they think is interesting. So they would don't, I think they'll take a risk on a theme to think that that's a really cool theme. I never thought about that or wow, I'm into this. So let's see what they got to, to offer. I think you're gonna get more people willing to, to give you a try with the theme than just you know putting out their best stories that's very generic and going to have a hard time standing out among a lot of other anthologies. That's my opinion. I it, The other argument was, um, because in, in uh, Ourlings, we actually have, since our last anthology, a lot of new members right. who do not have any uh, writing credits whatsoever. And uh, anthologies are usually a good way to get your first writing credit when you're a beginning author. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make it easier for new members, um, not having a theme, it's easier to get just the best short story that they uh ha have written uh along the way also by uh deciding on a theme if you decide a theme then it's like a starting gun the you know you you announce what the theme is you put out a call of submissions and then the writing starts a lot of people um uh don't work well with deadlines or <laughs> or pressure or, or you know uh assignments as it were so you know well you know uh, we're talking about a couple of different types of of anthologies here I mean, a writing group anthology to me is is kind of a let's call it semi-pro right uh, as opposed to a full professional uh, anthology that pays that pays money and, and perhaps even full uh, full rates okay um if you're just appealing to the writing group, yes, I can very see very much see how the theme might narrow the number of selections that you get. If you're paying money, I don't see how the theme narrows you so much that you won't get enough good submissions for, for an anthology. I am not paying top dollar for Fantastic Detectives, and uh, I got something like 80-plus uh, uh, submissions, many of which were very, very good. Um, right. It's worthy to note that the Hourlings best-selling anthology was one titled The Curator. It also had the be one of the best covers that we put out, and it was very tightly themed. It In was. fact, uh, um, uh, stories that, came, that went through it almost read like a novel 
written by multiple authors. And that, that's one of my favorite submissions I ever did to the Arrowing Sue. And I think it was because it just, it, you know, the final product was just beautiful. It was yeah. beautifully put together. It, it did come out as a as our, our, our best effort. It's the uh, best selling effort that we've done. And I think the cover rocked. I love that. Yeah. I love the cover. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, you know, I will say, like, I've been an editor for the other writing group I'm in. I've, I've been an editor once for Arrowing's, but. Another writing group I'm in, I was the editor for like almost 10 years, like I think like nine years for nine different anthologies about. And um, it's always been themed. We never did, under me anyway, we never did a uh, an open submission. And I was, I, I was very flexible as far as what would constitute a theme. You know, if somebody wanted to like just go all out with the theme and make it very overt, that was great. And if somebody wanted to just like, you know, throw in a few Easter eggs, that pointed to the theme, that was okay too. So you can have a themed anthology and have just a less strict um, criteria for what fits that theme. Of course, that's not what the curator was. We were just saying it was tightly themed and it worked great. But if you if you want the best of both worlds, I do yeah. think that's an option. Don't you guys think? Yeah. I should, we should add for, for anybody who's not familiar with it, uh, the curator um, was a story about Basically, the, the theme was that a, a spaceship, a, a demolished spaceship has been found and there is one cargo container intact. And it contains uh, and it, it contains a whole bunch of priceless paintings. And so each story in the anthology had to be about one of those paintings. It had to, it could be anything about that painting, but it had to be about the, the painting. And so there was a, there was a theme throughout all of it. And then there was a continued story about the mystery of who was the curator, the body that was actually found in the container with all of the paintings. So that was very tightly themed. Yeah, I, I love the theme of that. And if, you know, um, if this year we can come up with a, um, a tight theme that excites the writers in the group, that would be, that would be great too. Now, well, when it this was- Anthologies. I, I will I will tell you that there's only two types of anthologies that I buy. Um, Ninety percent of them are themed anthologies, and the rest are best of the year anthologies from various trusted editors. I don't buy any general uh, edit, uh, general purpose anthologies from like semi pro. Uh, anthologies. Now, Dave, that's a good point because when semi pro anthologies say the best of, who's deciding that? It's just the author, you know? So it's not really an objective opinion. When you have an editor that you trust deciding the best of, that's good. What's I mean, that? Like, when I say best of, I mean like Gardner Desois, a, an accomplished editor, picking the picking the 20 best stories of, of, of 2017, let's say. He's, he's dead now, so it won't be, it won't be uh, 2022. Uh, or the same thing with David Hartwell or John Joseph uh, Adams or some of those real named editors in, in the field. You know, so if you want to get my attention, especially for like a, like a semi-pro anthology, it needs to be on a theme that resonates with me or I ain't buying it. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. This was less contentious than I thought it would be. I thought that Marty was in firmly in the camp of no theme. No, no. I was just trying to advocate for uh, the new folks in the group. Oh, okay. Um, I don't really care. I can write whatever the hell, you know, Yeah. Uh, the theme comes out. It's, and David. I want to, I want to jump on that, too, because yeah. from, from my perspective, writing is about starting a project and finishing a project. Um, it's about writing to theme. It's about making, you know, okay, I'm not always the best person at deadlines, but yet I've been in a whole bunch of anthologies, uh, and I've written custom works for those anthologies. So... That's the writing life. Get used to it. Yeah, I think yeah. A, um, by assigning a theme, if you do it right, it functions like a writer's prompt and mm. should, you know, activate the imagination of the writers that we have. So that's the challenge that we have this year. I'd like to see that happen. The better we um, make the call for submissions, the better the submissions will be that we get. Yep. And if we don't get enough, I would open it up to other writing groups. 
Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Don't 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 uh bend. Yeah, I think that Dave Dave's point of having the discipline to address your story. It, like I said, when I was an editor, I was very flexible. It's it's not that hard. You know, if you if you practice your creative juices um, and just do a little planning, you can adjust even an existing story. I'm not sure that would make the best submission. The best submission is probably one that you write for the end, for the theme. But um, if you are very passionate about adapting a current story, I think it can be done. So just having the creativity to do that or the discipline to say, you know, I'm going to write, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to keep it in my voice. It's still going to be something I'm proud of. Just because it's a theme doesn't mean that someone is overriding, you know, your create, creative juices or whatever. It can still be your story. But having the discipline is very important. I also think that having a theme will encourage people to write something new. Yeah. Instead of submitting something that they wrote 10 years ago. And uh, um, that's true. And, you know, you we want to encourage uh, the members of our writers group to actually write. That's true. And um, make it easier for them by giving them a writer's prompt via the theme. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got to come up with a, a story about uh, unicorns. Okay. You know, whatever, whatever, pick your, pick your topic, but it moves me into areas I might not other otherwise go right. and break down the rut. So I, I use themes deliberately to, to kind of exercise some different writing muscles. Yeah, me yeah. too. For the longest time, um, I, I don't submit anymore, but I submitted every year to the hourings for like five years and like for nine years to my other group. So I've done a fair share, but um, every year of those was a challenge for me because I find short stories harder to write than novels. It's just something with my how my brain works. Being able to accomplish you know, a story arc in a short amount of time is more challenging for me than having the space of a novel. And so um, you know, doing that uh, all those years to a theme, challenging myself in an area that I was not comfortable in, uh, I think gave me skills that I wouldn't have otherwise had, to your point. Cool. Yeah. All right, so we're oh. all agreeing. So there's no, there's no mud flying anywhere. So I'm sorry for the hyping up a... If, if there were people fight. writing for anti-theme, <laughs> I think we've answered uh, yeah. our perspectives um, on the issue. Yeah. yeah. So let us know in the comments if you agree. The industry likes themes. Uh, customers like themes. Customers are more likely to pay for themed anthologies. Mm -hmm. Are more likely to encounter themed anthologies out there in the real world where they pay bucks, right? You know, mm -hmm. so you want to be published in anthologies. Figure out how to write the theme. Yeah. Yeah, my most popular anthology that I've published had the theme of zombies, the zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And I had rules established in it for the authors, and I got buried in submissions. And uh, those have been um, pretty popular uh, anthologies uh, for Tannhauser Press. Fantastic. Cool. All right, you guys. All right. Good show. Good See time. you guys next week. All right. All, All right. right. Bye now.